So I haven't made a video in a while, and uh, well, I've made a lot of videos from live streaming, but I haven't actually made like a real legit review or do something video. So here I have a reason to make a video. I have no antennas on my house or in my house or anywhere. I just use like whips and stuff, and I'm a wh I'm too far away from my favorite repeater to really do anything. So I went and got the Tram Model 1481. It's a dual band VHF UHF. Um, big long pole antenna that I'm going to stick on my chimney hopefully if all goes well so I'm gonna put it together and um, hopefully not get coronavirus while doing it because Amazon departments um, have had many cases so first things first and second thing first Founders all day IPA. So this antenna is really cheap, like compared to the one like Diamond makes, like the X50 and the other ones. Now I'm all slippery, geez. Supposedly it does just as well, if not better, than all the other ones, but it does have a lot of issues. Like the biggest water gets into it because it's not weathered, uh, weatherproof. A lot of people have said like, ah, oh, yeah, just put some like self amalgamating tape. This is difficult. <clears throat> beautiful um, self amalgamating tape on the joints so that they don't get uh, water in them film once on 70 centimeters 200 watts uses a UHF female connector now I hate I despise outdoor antennas that use UHF like SO239 on an outdoor antenna because they're not waterproof you have to like clobber them up with like self amalgamating tape and all that stuff to make it like waterproof an in connector would be a much better uh, much more preferable thing and, and more better antennas like diamond comet they have uh, they use in connectors some do some don't and it's a total height of 16 feet it's going to be as tall as my house well i mean probably half as tall should go something like Here's a question. There's an element way down in there. Don't know if you can see it. Like that's where it attaches to this thing sticking out here. So how does it do that exactly? Push it down in there and hope for the best. Like calling that done? I'm not so sure. Don't be dumb like me. See the bottom element actually pops out and you use a set screw securely with supplied Allen wrench. Now where's the supplied Allen wrench? There's the supplied Allen wrench. Sis, there's two of them. And I, I left this in the bag. Dumb. I'm dumb. Man, it's hot. How do I get that thing out of there? Do I just like... <laughs> yes, that is how you do it. <laughs> so the set screw is actually already in there. So you gotta back it out of there. So that just sticks in there like that. And now I tighten it real tight this is supposedly the gasket that holds the water out but I'm gonna tell you right now it doesn't do all. now I need two crescent wrenches to get this thing up perfectly snug and tight there's still quite a bit of gap in here okay I thought it'd be a little less dumb to you know put this on a table and not on the ground because I'm inevitably going to lose some some bit or bob so I got crescent wrench crescent wrench yeah, I'm gonna give these things a good old... Wait a second. Wrong way. That's tight. Now we're gonna do the same thing to this side. So I need to get the antenna element to poke out again. And to do that, I'm gonna have to do the, to do the dance. There it is. The instructions don't really tell you to do that, but I got it. I think that might be the source of at least some consternation. Some of the reviews, they say like, how do I get this thing? It's like, well, there's a, there's a secret dance you gotta do. Yet again, we need the Allen wrench and back the set screw out. I just had faith there was actually a set screw in there until it can't go no more. Oh, all good. Put it together. It's going to slide the element back up there 
And I guess this little black line means that's how far you need to go down. Let me check the instructions real quick to make sure I'm not doing something stupid. And tight securely with special wrench on the flat sides of shell joints. There's a special wrench. Is it talking about this thing? Special wrench. Is that even on the list? I don't see it. I didn't even see it fall out of the bag or anything, but I mean crescent tools. Crescent wrenches work just fine. What? Uh, they won't even fit that one. Where the heck is the special wrench? Well, we'll just ignore that for right now. And just tighten it really hard! Ugh. And that should be fine. It's got those three radials. Pop, pop them out of the bag. The nuts are already threaded onto the rod, so it's just a matter of popping them in. Take our crescent wrench. Ugh. Tight. And that's it. And there you have it, uh, a 16 foot long antenna, like very long. Probably can't even see the top of it. Literally more than half as tall as my house. So the next steps would probably be to put on this uh, bracket doohickey. Yeah. So at the bottom there is a little cap for the SO239 connector, which is again, not ideal. But that's okay. You put this on first because the tube goes over it, right? And this is why I need to buy a tripod. Honestly, I should have brought a bought a tripod before I decided to become a YouTube star. <laughs> and then for the support pipe, I'm gonna go ahead and put these on that using these and some of those. And um, I won't show you that by the magic of video. So here's a small problem. Um, well, this is tightened on there as far as it can go, but it, uh, yeah, because this washer is prohibiting the screw to protrude very far into that, you know, cylinder there, which is a problem. And there are three of those screws, one, two, three, as it says on the, you know, list of things that it has, and they're all that short. So I'm not going to be able to use this lock washer and I'm going to need to get longer screws. That is a bad review coming from me by the magic of video. Ta-da! Now, without those washers, which you desperately need for a situation like this, they fit just fine and they're very sturdy, but like, you can't... Oh, what, what? Come on. So now the coax goes through the tube and keeping this, uh, this hole in the direction of the, like, wording here pointed up, I presume, because this hole is what attaches it to the actual antenna fish that down through there and then align God damn, another problem since I have torqued down this screw it has made this tube slightly squished this needs to be down here presumably but I wanted to put it up here for more you know torque stability but I just wonder if I can jam it. oh there we go perfect and so now I've got it to where that threaded hole in the tube is lined up with the hole in the outer tube. So now I can put a screw in there and be happy. There we go. So now it's ready to mount. I'm gonna mount you. Oh, that's a tree. <laughs> in order to test drive this right now, I have a metal rod, fence post that I'm gonna bang into the ground. Avoid the tree. Avoid the fiber optic cable. Wiggle, 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 yeah. Come on, stop your wiggling. All right, kind of holds. Get this thing a little bit more tightened up than just sitting here loosey-goosey. As a baseline, this tram, also 1181 mag mount antenna, will be the baseline antenna. And I'm gonna need to put this on a ground plane, right? And to do that, ground plane. Another antenna I can use to compare with is the signal stick, which is literally the only antenna I've been using VHF UHF on besides the, the tram for whenever I'm in the car. I'm going to do a scan through of the VFO or my memories, which is a bunch of repeaters all around the area, and see what I can hear, and then move to a different antenna, see what I can hear, and then Move to the big boy and see what I can hear from there. Well, uh, that's all I got. So it looks like there's 
One dot over a seven, just barely peeking to a nine. No, this is with the tram ma uh, mag mount antenna. And it is showing a full S9. Well, you can't see it, but I can. And this is with the big boy. And it also has a full S9 reading. So here's something really interesting. If you know your hand bands, you'll, find, you'll notice this is not an amateur radio repeater. This is actually a GMRS repeater. I've never heard one of those before. Another goofy thing I noticed is the antenna is unplugged, but I can still hear it. <laughs> it must be really, really close. I think that's actually a really good signal. It's really out of focus, but it's a good signal. So I'm going to give this a shot where I pick a repeater that I know I can hardly hit. This is the 146850 St. Louis Suburban Radio Club repeater. Um, I'm going to go on extra low power and I'm going to try to talk into it. N0 SSC testing. N0 SSC testing. Nothing. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the mag mount antenna. N0 SSC testing. Now I'm going to switch to the big boy. N0 SSC testing. There it is! N0 SSC testing. Nice. I don't really know how well I got into the, the repeater, but it got into it. The other two antennas definitely didn't. And this is just being on the ground. Like, with all things equal, this antenna is going to be like 30 feet higher. So, that's going to be our next step. In the next video, and if I don't kill myself from falling, um, I'm going to take it up to the roof. I've never been on my roof. I don't even know, know if I can reach it, but give it a shot. Um, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and uh, click like and subscribe for you know more. And if you want to learn CW with me, check me almost every night at 7 p.m. Central. And I'll be right here streaming it live. Bye! Where's our chimney at? Shouldn't we have a chimney?